Well, welcome back. You know, there are always lots of laughs when comedian and Houstonian Michael Yo is around. You're looking at video from a year ago when Michael stopped by our set while on tour. And since then, life has changed quite a bit. And now we are smiling for a different reason. After a tough fight against the coronavirus, Michael is now COVID-free, here to share his story live, not in studio, but by Zoom. Michael, it's great to see you. First yes. of all, we got to just ask you, you, you look great and you're fully recovered. You're feeling good? Oh, yeah, I feel great. Uh, I still have fluid in my lungs, so they said that's going to take about six more weeks to get over. But, yeah, it was pretty bad in there. It was really scary. Well, walk us through, Michael, to, from the beginning, because, you know, I listen to your podcast that you have that you talk about what you've been through. And before diagnosis, you have you were running around, you were kind of doing the audition thing. You were also, you know, working full time, being a husband and a parent and all of that. So were you kind of run down? Did you feel like you were getting sick? Yeah, I performed in New York. And then I came home as soon as I landed. Home is L.A. As soon as I landed, I went to Las Vegas and performed. And then I had three auditions. And then that weekend, uh, I felt run down and I started to give a, get a fever. So Friday, I just put myself in quarantine. And then uh, I stayed in quarantine for three days. And on the fourth day, I couldn't breathe uh, anymore. I was gasping for air. So my wife had to call 911 to come get me. And the last thing I remember was my three-year-old watching me through the window, going through all this crying. And just, it, it was like a movie. I put my hand against the glass and told him I'm gonna be okay. And they took me straight to the hospital. Oh. And as soon as I got there, they were like, without testing, they go, yo, you got Corona, took a X-ray of my lungs. And, and then uh, the doctor came in and said, uh, I, I asked him, I said, be direct, what's going on? And he goes, we're not going to know for two days, mm -hmm. but it's going to go good or it's going to go really bad. Oh so, because my, my lungs were filling up with fluid and they needed like two to three days to make sure it would stop. So it was the worst pain I ever felt those two and a half days. It was horrible. You know, just hearing your story, Michael, I'm sorry that you have gone through all of this. During that time, I know you're isolated in the hospital for more than a week. You couldn't see your son Oliver, your wife. I'm sure that was just heart wrenching seeing your son through the glass and not being able to, to be there with him. Were you concerned that this could be the end? Oh, yeah. By the way, the doctor said it. Yeah. I was like, that I could never see, I, I'm gonna, I, you know, it went through my mind, I could die. In two days, when a doctor goes in two days, we know if it's gonna go good or really bad, really bad is dead, you know? Yeah. And you're seeing all these stories on the news and the worst part about it, you would think if somebody told you, you have two days to live, you get to enjoy it, but you're in the worst pain you have ever been in in your life. And it, it, it was just a, a surreal moment, I didn't, you know, at times I didn't even know if, if this was real or not. I was going in and out of like, uh, just, I was getting pumped up with all types of drugs. I did the hydroxychloroquine, I did the um, the HIV drug. I mean, they. I was a test subject. I feel like I was a test subject because I've never drank, I've never done drugs, and I was in good health. I worked out six times a day, and I went to the hospital and literally they gave me everything. Everything you can imagine they gave me, and uh, they were, you go ahead. Oh, no, but it, when when I uh, when we think about this, Michael, when you went into the hospital, this was like early March. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think there was only like, uh, yeah, it wasn't, so yeah, it wasn't a lot of cases. So they didn't know a lot. They didn't know what to give you, what to not give you. I would be watching TV right. and they talk about a drug the next 30 to 30 minutes to an hour. They would be giving me that drug. Now, they only kept me on hydroxychloroquine for a day and a half because they said where my body was, it wasn't a good fit. But they kept me on an HIV drug the whole time. And they started, you know, I don't even know what they gave me. Every two hours, I was getting injected with something. So. Oh, my goodness. And I understand during this time, Michael, your body, you were eating jello in the hospital. You were losing all kinds of weight. So that that alone is a lot to recover from. Are you are you feeling now that life around your family is still a little normal? Or are you still taking extra steps to to keep well, everyone safe? I'm actually wearing a mask around my family because here's the problem is the news is always changing so much. 
And I still, like around our four month old, I wear a mask around my son. I wear a mask around my wife. I think she's probably had it. I think the whole family's had it because my wife had a fever for a day. My kids had a fever for half a day. So I think we all got it, but until mm -hmm. we get enough testing, we won't know, but I'm still taking the precautions because now I've created a network of doctors and just different people that have gone through this. And I'm learning a lot of stuff that's not out there, you know, publicly. And it just kind of scares me that, you know, we'll be hearing this stuff in like a month, month and a half. Right. You were looking at photos of your beautiful family, your children, your wife. And I mean, when you reflect back on this, Michael, and you're such a funny guy, you know, we laugh mm -hmm. with you and comedians, you know, make your jokes out of your life. And so this is such a, a turning point for you. But I, I want to say thank you for sharing this because um, this is real life and, and we do want to laugh with you. But also, I mean, our heart just pours out to you to be able to put this into words and to let people know, like, this is what you went through. This is how serious it was and the vulnerability to put it out there uh, of the of the virus that you went through. Well, I think uh, we're at a time now where when people watch the news and listen about the coronavirus, it's always politically attached. And when a person like me comes along and just tells a real story of what happened to me, I think people really, really uh, bonded with that because I don't have a political agenda. I just want people to be safe. And I just wanted to say to all the frontline workers, essential workers, I mean, to me, they're risking their lives for us being so selfless and for us to not take the right precautions to you know, keep everyone safe. That means we're being selfish. So let's not do that when you have so many people risking their lives for us. And I was at a hospital, people are dying alone. Like people are dying alone because of this virus. They're, they're talking to their family over a phone, a walkie talkie or FaceTime. That's no mm. way to die. So let's just respect everyone and take precautions and just be safe out there. Yeah, it's unimaginable. I mean, I can't even imagine a loved one dying and not being able to see them oh. in their final moments. You mentioned earlier, Michael, that day by day, of course, th the story is changing. There's new information. Sometimes we're hearing conflicting information. It's a lot to sort of keep up with the latest information. Mm -hmm. What is your message for people out there who are either not taking this seriously or who are completely discounting or disregarding what's going on right now? Well, I have two different opinions on that. One is it happened to me and I'm one of the most healthiest. I've never been to the hospital besides this. So I'm very healthy. So it can happen to anybody. Uh, you have to take the right precautions. But then the other side of me is if you're not seeing the amount of people dying and all the facts that are real about this coming out, there's nothing I can say to change your mind. You just don't want to change your mind. And that's sad because if you're going out and not taking the right precautions by wearing a mask or whatever your city tells you to do, you're not just maybe getting your family sick, you're getting other people around you sick that may not even know you and then that's gonna affect their family. Now their family member is in the hospital dying alone. Like how fair is that? So it, it's just, look, the facts are there. You just, if you're watching the news, just, just go to, your your you can look all the stuff up people are really dying i believe it's over fifty five thousand people so if you're not believing it still there's really not much i can say and that's really sad right right and and now that you're on the other side of this michael how are you feeling what what are you feeling day to day i mean are you feeling back to normal oh no i i still feel weak uh, i can't work out like i want to work out um you know, like I said, I don't, mm -hmm. at times I'm winded. Uh, I'm not sort of, uh, I'm not gasping for air, but it's more of when I talk a lot, like when I do interviews and stuff, sometimes I gotta stop, take a breath because my lungs aren't, aren't, um, aren't fully healed yet. So th they're still working it out and I got fluid in it. So, you know, I'm not, I would say I'm about 85% and it's been 85 for a couple of weeks. But I'm starting to work out, but mm -hmm. literally I only can do a third of the workout before I'm just exhausted. So it takes a lot of time to recover from this. And is is it's a big, big mental issue too, because you go from the hospital in my case of, oh my God, I may die, to now have having to recover from that. And it's it's mm -hmm. it's heavy. 
it's heavy. So everybody that's in this fight, man, you have to be strong and you got to keep pushing and keep your loved ones around you. Yeah. And Michael, I know the last month, month and a half, really have been such a roller coaster for you. We are out of time now, but okay. final thoughts before we let you go. Please be safe. Please do what your city says to do. And remember, anytime you're not following the rules, you could be affecting someone else. We are so glad that you've recovered. You look great. We miss you. When, when uh, this is all you. over, we hope to get you back in studio here in Houston. Thank you so much. And I want to say hi to my mom Thanks, and dad. Michael. I know they're watching. Mm -hmm. So bye. hi, guys. <laughs> oh, Michael, that's so nice. Listen, that's please awesome. tell uh, uh, your family awesome. we say hi. And the next time you are with Courtney and with me here in Studio B, please bring your parents and your family along. We would I will, 100%. 100%. Okay, fantastic. We're going to take a break. Houston Life will be right back.